Hi everybody, this is Mrs. Ellsworth. We're going to be talking about multiplying integers and um, I want you to take notes on this. Mark up at the top 2-4 multiplying integers and you're going to be writing down several examples so that you can go back and check your notes. These are all like example number one where you're multiplying um, numbers with different signs. So in this case you can see you've got a negative 3 times a positive 12. When that happens you've got a negative 36. So it's just 3 times 12, it's got one negative, so it's going to be negative. Okay, so whenever you got them with opposite signs, then it's going to be a negative value. Okay, now this is 4 times a negative 7. It's not 4 minus, minus 7, it's 4 times a negative 7. So what's this one going to be? It's going to be negative 28. 4 times 7 is 28, and you've got one negative there, so it's going to be negative. You've got different signs, it's going to be negative. Okay, I want you to attempt to do these two real quick. Write them down, and then check your work. So pause. Okay, so 7 times negative 8 is going to be negative, negative 56. Okay, negative 6 times 12, that is going to be a negative also. It's going to be a negative 72. So there's really kind of a uh, thing to say here when you're multiplying with different signs as negative. Whether it's the first one times a positive one, it's negative, or whether it's switched around, positive times a negative, you're going to get a negative value. So multiplying with different signs, you get a negative value. That's only when there's two numbers being multiplied. We'll talk about three or more later on. Okay, multiplying with the same signs. Okay, with the same sign, we're going to get something that's positive. I mean, think about this. If you had 5 times 7 and they were positives, that you get a positive 35. It's going to be the same exact thing with same signs with the negatives. We're going to get a positive here. So this is going to be a positive 35. Okay, h times 12 is going to be 96. We've got two negatives, so it's going to be 96. Whether you write 96 or positive 96, either one is just fine. Okay, I want you to pause it right now, and I want you to do the 2a and 2b. Are, these are all exact, like examples number two. Okay. Okay, so um, here we go again. Multiplying the same sign, we get a positive answer. Multiply a positive times a positive, you get a positive. Negative times a negative, you get a positive. Okay, so this one's going to be a positive 55. There's two negatives. So it's going to be positive. Here's another two negatives. So it's going to be 52. It's going to be a positive 52. Okay. So just looking at those two things that I slid out on those last two slides. Okay. Multiplying different signs, you get a negative. Multiplying with the same signs, you get a positive. That only works when it's with two numbers. So what if you're multiplying more than two integers? Okay. Then what happens? Well. We're going to count the number of positives, negatives on this and positive. But I just always stick with the negative so I don't have to remember more than one. So if you think about this, you've got 7 times 9. Negative 7 times 9, you're going to get a negative 63. And then again, times another negative. So negative times negative, you're going to get a positive. Okay? And it gives a positive 378. Okay? Now if I go in and multiply these two together, I'm going to get a positive. So now think of that one as a positive times a negative, and then I'm going to get a negative. Okay, so when I go in and multiply out the 12 times the 5, I'm going to get my negative 60. So I do have something for you to think about with this. Let's just look at this, this right here. Okay, so I know that there are more combinations. There's actually two more than if you, if you would think about this right here. So if I would take a negative times a positive times a positive, I'm going to get a negative. If I do a positive, negative, positive, I'm going to get a negative. There's no sense in remembering all these and memorizing this. Let me just make a point here. Okay, now I've got two negatives and it's going to be positive. And now I've got three negatives and it's going to be, this is an error right here. Let me fix this. I guess I can't type it on. Oh, that needs to be negative right there. Okay, so there's a moral to the story on this. Oh, let me pause this. There we go. I'm much happier with that. Anyway, so we got three negatives multiplied together and we get a negative.
So what I want you to recognize is that there's a real simple rule about this. Okay, you count the number of negatives. I've got one negative, my answer is going to be negative. One negative, my answer is going to be negative. Two negatives is going to be positive. And three negatives is going to be negative. So I always tell myself one rule or the other, okay, um, that you count the number of negatives. <laughs> you count the number of negatives, okay? If it's an even number of negatives that you've got, then your answer is going to be positive. If it's an odd number, then it's going to be negative. Just remember one. That's all you need to because in the other one, you'll know. Okay? Even number of negatives, two negatives makes a positive in multiplying. Okay? And I know to some reason people like to, to say that. Okay. So let's go ahead and look at this. So we've got three negatives. That's an odd number, so my answer is going to be negative. I've got two negatives. That's an even number, so it's going to be positive. Okay, we can do this other ways too. This is just example number four. Let's look at another one. Okay, what if we are multiplying more than just numbers? Okay, we're going to start putting in variables in there. Here's our old rules. Okay, and so if we know that we've got an odd number of negatives, we, our answer is going to be negative. So I see just one negative in this one, so my answer is going to be negative. But that's just thinking about it. So let's look at this. So we can rearrange these. Since these are all multiplying, we can use a commutative property, and we can go and put the numbers together and the letters together, the variables together. So I'm going to just highlight these, okay, where they are. Okay, negative 7. I want to get the negative 7 and the 4 together and the A and the B together. Okay, so, there, so there's my teacher talk. You don't have to necessarily write that down, but if you're having trouble figuring out what I'm what I'm combining, then you perhaps you should do that. So I've got a negative 7 times 4, which is a negative 28, and 8 times b is just a times b. So this is going to be a negative 28 a b. Negative 28 times a times b. Don't write the times x inside of these things because then it's going to start getting some jumbled up mess. If you write the dot between them, that's better, but just know that when we've got numbers and letters attached to each other that you're already multiplying it. Okay, here we've got another one. We're going to go and multiply. We want to multiply together the two numbers. Okay. Okay, with the commutative property, we can switch those babies around. So we got negative 3 times 6, which is a negative 18. That's all times y still. Okay, that's it. That's all there is to it. Now notice one negative. One negative is odd number, so it's the answer is going to be negative. One negative, odd number, negative. Okay, so those are all like examples number five. Okay, here's example number six, and this is the last type of example. Okay, so now we're going to evaluate 2RS. So we need to substitute 5 for R and negative 10 in for S. So I'll do that. Okay, now we need to multiply it out. That's going to be 10 times a negative 10, so we're going to get a negative 100. And so, again, count the number of odd negatives that you've got in here. And I've got just one, so that means that it's odd, so my answer is going to be negative. Okay, here we're going to do another evaluate. Remember, evaluate, you just you, you plug in the numbers and you simplify it all the way down to the simplest form like this, negative 100. Okay, so um, evaluate 4 times A times B, or 4AB if a equals negative 8 and b equals a negative 4. So we're going to go ahead and plug in and substitute a and b with negative 8 and negative 4. Notice I've got two negatives, so that's an even number, so my answer is going to be positive. But I mean, you can also multiply it out and figure that out. There's a negative 32 times a negative 4. That's going to be positive. So it's a positive 128. So um, that's, that's all I've got for you. Just um, when we do our assignment, it's really big to remember these. So maybe make sure that you write these down and maybe put a circle around it or a heart around it or something so that you recognize that you need to worry about that. Also, with each example that you had your, in your book, it'll say this problem's like example number six. This problem's like example number two. Okay, so make sure that you wrote all these down and that you wrote notes. I'm going to check them off tomorrow. 
Okay, this one's under 10 minutes. Good deal. See you later.